back to that back to your earlier point, Pat, about um, bowlers of this caliber caliber being capable of holding their holding their wood, covering up as many pins as possible right. after three balls. They threw they five frames between the both of them. There's only one drop pin up there. They don't leave many. They don't leave many fight. Rick gets up on that lane one. Look at she and Luke seem to figure out this lane. Well. That one got away from a little bit left. Okay, you looked a little bit fast up there, Pat. He did get a little quick. Um, one of the things we talked about off off camera with some of the bowlers was you know, some of the. What, what makes you the 145 average? What, what gets you there? And they all said the same thing. It's consistency. It's consistent approach, consistent everything, every every thought, every process. And there's Rick picking up a tough uh, tough spare there. It's a nice ball. Yeah, there's a couple of ways of covering that. Rick goes off the wall. Gets the head pin to come off the wall and, and carry the eight pin. Well, you know, the, the, the trick there is clearly get the three in the front out of the way. And, and there's two ways, like you said, you can go heavy through the middle or, or hope one of those three flies off the side and catches that. Luke looking, Rick rather, looking to add to his lead. He's only going to get five out of that. But. Stretches his advantage. I think, what you, I think what you saw right there again was uh, Rick getting a little quick coming through, a little quick on the approach, and you can see his arm kind of carried through to the other side, trying to make up for that left, left, and left on the first box. And, Hold it across, kind of compensate for that second. Yeah. We're throwing a couple bad balls here, but you see, this is true of all of our bowlers. Everybody stays cool, manages yeah. their emotions, gets up there, throws the best ball they can on the next one. Well, these guys all know that you can't you can't bowl angry, and you, you can't let one shot affect your next shot. Yeah. yeah that's a that's another you know, going with our theme: how to score higher. Yeah, these guys, these guys play this game one ball at a time. Right. Eric looking for his first mark of the evening. And he's off, off the headband again. 2-8. It shows a little bit of frustration. Yeah, he's, well, it is, he hasn't really found the pocket yet. Yeah. Well, i tell you what, if this falls down, he's going to be... <laughs> Jumping for joy. He's going to be as happy as he could possibly be. That was unconventional. It would not have been the way most people played that shot. You know, he's going to look at it from the standpoint where he's he hasn't started off the way he would want, but he's only down 14 pence. He's still in this match. Being the professional that he is, he's he's going to forget about the first four frames here and uh, pretend he's starting a new game. Of course he is, and you know you see by those three big stars on the back of his shirt, he he's won some big events. Yeah. Still off a little bit there. Got got closer on the inside of the three pin. Leaves himself a an easy three pin spare by most standards. There's no gaps between the pins. Well, he should be able to just hit. He can pretty much hit this one of two ways. Well, or, or you could choose that way. That's yeah. the third way I wasn't thinking of. Carries it off the wall. What was that word I used a moment ago? Unconventional? That was an unconventional way to make that spin. But most of these guys will just tell you to look up at the scoreboard. That's right. Or look down in our case. This is the first time, maybe this game where Rick's got to think a little bit. Eric's got his first mark. He knows Eric's cal capabilities. Yeah, he knows he's got to get up there and try to make a statement. And uh, there's that lane one ball from the the Dancero and Robustelli team. He's got that messenger pin. It's doing double duty. Carries the five and the ten. Did a lot of work. That pin did a lot of work. Yeah. He went from having a, a, a tough spare break to uh, having a strike. Exactly what he needed in that moment too. Try to keep Eric at bay. Now you see him waiting right here. Um, interesting. Uh, he's probably waiting for that first ball. Oh. A lot of these guys probably have a comfortable feeling with one or one of their balls where they throw it as their first first ball. Whereas you know their balls, the spare ball, the third ball, you're not as concerned. But the first ball is really 
the one you want to get right, you know, you have a good comfort zone with it. Yeah. There's no place like home. That's what that first ball feels like to most of us. Throws a good reason for waiting. Ball. Clears everything but the five pin. Leaves a solid five. But in this game, I mean, nobody's going to complain. This game, you get nine, you're going to you're going to take that all night. Yeah. Nine and one all night these long. Guys. Single pin's the easiest spare to make. Rick does a great job. Puts ten on that spare. All right. We're going to take a short break right here. Hear from uh, one of our sponsors, perhaps, and uh, maybe from some of the bowlers. We'll be back with the completion of this match in just a few moments. Hi there, I'm Brian Ewing, the executive producer of Duckpin TV. Hope you're enjoying today's show. But I do want to take a minute to reach out to you, the viewers of Duckpin TV, and ask for your help. As you can probably tell from today's show, Duckman TV does not yet have all the equipment we need to produce the professional broadcasts we're looking to produce. So we're asking for your help in your donations. You can visit us on Facebook, www.facebook.com slash DuckpinTV, and you'll find a donate link at the top of the page so you can donate via PayPal. If you'd like to make an offline donation, you can get in touch with a Duckpin TV representative. In Rhode Island, you can get in contact with Chris Louth, in Connecticut, you can get in contact with myself, Brian Ewing, Eric Latesca, or Pat Rufo. And in Maryland, you can get in touch with Billy Coots. Definitely want to urge you to donate. Without you and your help, Duckman TV wouldn't be what it is. Hope you enjoy the rest of today's show. Welcome back, folks. Uh, before tonight's match, we had a chance to catch up with Eric Kellett. We asked him what his favorite personal memory uh, as a Duckman bowler is. Favorite moment was uh, 2003 when I first won uh, first Pro Tour. Um, beat Eddie Darling. Uh, and the best part of it was Luke on Sunday comes in when we were driving back, driving over there before I won. He goes, uh, it's about time you win one. And that day I did. So that was my uh, best moment in duck and bowling. Eric with a seven load there is a very uh, interesting leave. He's got the one nine ten. That's not something you see very often. But um, you know, this is another situation where if he gets that head pin moving around, it could easily clear out that back row. Yeah. Oh, when he does it. Oh, he did it almost perfectly, and yeah. he just didn't get a good break there. Couldn't have shot it much better. No, that's about where it's exactly where you want to hit it. The pin went right where he wanted it to. It just didn't do the work. Eric, fight, fighting hard here. Well, as we were saying in last week's match, uh, this is a point in the match where you know Eric's going to have to start to make a move. Rick's got a 17, 18 plus lead on him. He's, He's not leaving himself a lot of room here to, to open it. He's going to have to start marking. Yeah. Eric, one of the one of the best clutch bowlers I know of. Um, there's a guy I, you just never count out. Oh, and what a Oof. really tough break. It's a head pin just a little bit lighter. Head pin doesn't carry the two pin. Yeah, five, that, seven, ten standing there. The again, uh, it's just not an impossible shot, but not what he expected to see after throwing that ball. Yeah. going to take a pretty... Precise shot here. And oh. he did. He hit it again, just not quite where it needed to be. Yeah. And at the moment, it's yeah, Eric's. Eric's falling behind here. He's, he he knows he's running out of time. Well, right now this puts Rick in a position to really put a, a hammer down and take control, complete control just, of this particular match. Yeah. You never want to count out any one of these guys that can string strikes the way they do. But right here is a good chance for Rick to, to put a lot of pressure on. Yeah, he's in the driver's seat here. Oof. He carries. There's a he's tough looking at a split there, but 
pins on that load puts him twenty six pins ahead of Eric yeah, that's, in the sixth frame. That's a lot of make. That's a lot of make to, to get in three boxes. Twenty six. Yep. You're talking. Yeah, at Eric least needs three hits Eric with big loads. Has to have all three marks. Rick with no marks. Rick with no marks. The scenarios where Eric wins the match are starting. It looks like he needs doubles. Right. And Rick does a great job of cleaning up the wood, which is you know, also very important right now. Yeah. He's 31 pins over the frame. Keeping pace with his teammate, Luke Robustelli. Well, if, if Rick were to hang on to this, this would give the robustelli dancer combo the early two-point advantage. But the uh, format is such that they'll be able to... Kyle and, and Eric would still have a, a chance as partners sort of to come back and, and win the win the duel. Yeah, absolutely. We've got a, our next round, which we'll be uh, sharing with you next week. Scotch doubles yeah. format. Interesting it's going to be format. really exciting. We'll definitely take some time before next week's show to explain that format for you. Wow. Back to back, really tough breaks for Rick. And you know, if you're if you're Eric Pellet right now, if you're I think your eyes are lighting up. Well, you're thinking, well, I got a, at least a glimmer of hope there. 7-10 split, hardest. Back to back, 7 Bar none, seven, the, the hardest split to cover, the hardest two pins to cover in our game. Now, someone uh, like Rick, what do you think? He's going to go after the 7 or the 10? Yeah, Rick's Rick's going to go to the side he's comfortable with. He's, he's, he's uh, cross lane. He just didn't try to blast that, that 10 the into 10. the corner and pop it out of the pit. Yeah, but Rick's... Rick's a bright guy. He's not. He's not expecting he's going to make it. He's just looking to get one. Well, pin yeah, he wanted to pick up pins there. This is really. This is a must mark situation for Pellet here. It's not necessarily a must strike situation. Right. We're not quite there yet. Eric's a, a really versatile bowler. One of the more. Oh. Beautiful shot there. Doesn't carry the six pin, but, carry it, but. but that's all right. Looking for a spare here, not necessarily a strike. Uh, Eric's one of those bowlers. Um, he could change his angle. He could take he makes three a lot steps of adjustments. He does. instead of four steps. He could take five steps. Um, very, uh, oh, good. Slid by that one. Fooled me up there, Pat. I thought he was going to Well, he didn't, didn't drift. This, he, he normally has that fade right into the pin and that one just stayed true. Yeah. That's, that's what, that that's what I thought it was gonna happen last frame. Last ball rather. So we so are now, now yeah, we're at a point now this has got to be a strike, I think. He's yeah. Really he's gonna throw a strike. And, and and Eric is probably not necessarily thinking I have to strike, he's thinking I have to hit the head pin and Correct. hopefully it's gonna be a strike. Just just what uh, just like what Luke was sharing. Throw the ball where he needs to go. You're not in control of the way the pins mix necessarily, yeah. but you are in control of where the ball at least initially hits. Yeah. Well, that's that's the ball right there, and again, as you were just saying, he did everything right. Yeah. He's not going to be disappointed about that ball. If anything, he's. Well, if you look at the scorecard right now, he's going to still has a possibility of throwing a 134, which means that Rick still has to mark at least one of the last two boxes. Absolutely. It isn't over yet, folks. All right, so Eric covers that five pin, keeps himself hanging on by a thread, but... Uh, well, at this point in the match, Rick knows he can close this out with a mark. That's right. Now, this is a moment where I think you're comfortable if you're Rick, but you don't want to be too comfortable. Well, he knows, he knows that Pellet's got to throw a triple to beat him, yeah. whether he marks or not. Again, Rick, Rick looks a little fast there. Cross himself over. Got away with it. His ball stayed up on the, on the deck a little bit longer that time. And the pins, you know, they don't leave quite as quick. I mean, he gets a lot of extra pins. Yeah. But this here might be enough to, to close out the match. He needs this and uh, fill. Anything over a four load would, would close the match out. Four load in a ten box. Yeah, four load. Is, yeah, that's true. And he gets, gets the, He's got the first part. 
but uh, I, I believe an eight on this ball, this first ball would, would block. You're, you're exactly out. right. Your math is perfect. An eight does close the game. If he throws a seven load, he has no worse than a tie. Right. Oh, and he makes it Ten easy. loads usually are better than a seven load. Yeah. Like he's settling in a little bit. Well, he's just going to clean this up. He's got a chance again. You know, strange as it may seem, he's got a chance to go 160. Yeah. Oh and man. One more ball, and he's going to. Throws a stick of dynamite down lane two. <laughs> that was just absolutely crushed right there. There's nothing left to sweep. Dance Road needs another strike to be our third. Game in the 160s out of three so far. Spectacular performance. He's going to settle for seven. Nice game, however. 57. So Robustelli and Dancero will indeed take the first two points of the series, setting it up for the next two weeks when Pellet and Shaw are going to be forced to, to win. Yeah, backs against the wall. But well, that's when these guys are probably most dangerous. Eric always a professional here. Gets up there, still trying to work out the kinks. Covers the spare. I'm sure he's looking at those first four boxes where he didn't quite make it to the pocket. And I'm thinking if I had just gotten there quicker. And then the game, been a little uh, closer. Yeah. he missed, a, he missed a, a single. Yeah, you know, just the, uncharacteristic. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And if and had it, you got to wonder, had Eric gotten off to an earlier start, would he have rattled Rick a little bit? Would he have yeah, you don't him know. off his game. It's hard to say. Eric puts one. Dead nuts right in the ahead. center there. Carries six for a one eighteen. Tough game. But. So that'll wrap up our second match. Um, once again, uh, Dancero and Robustelli. Dancero and Robustelli duo. They, they we get another one in their win column. We're going to take a moment to bring Rick Dancero over to the booth, and uh, we're going to have an interview with Rick. One at, right after we have a word from one of our sponsors. Lucky Strike Lanes is located at 185 Stafford Road in Mansfield, Connecticut. That's Route 32 right across from the drive-in movie theater. Lucky Strike has 24 duckpin lanes and is home of the Eastern Classic, duckpin bowling's most historic tournament. Lucky Strike is also a great place for birthday parties, group outings, corporate functions, and fundraisers. Lucky Strike also has lanes available for open bowling. Rock and bowl every Friday and Saturday night as well. You can visit Lucky Strike Lanes at LuckyStrikeLanesCT.com or on Facebook, Lucky Strike Lanes CT. Hope to see you soon. And we are back with this week's winner, uh, Rick Dancero, uh, partnered up with Luke Robustelli. And uh, Luke last week uh, edged out Kyle Shaw 166, 163. This week you threw a big game, 157. Eric struggled a little bit. When did you start thinking you should have a chance at uh, putting them out? Honestly, I, I was worried up until about the uh, ninth frame when I threw the threw the spare there because you know Eric wants to start hitting that head pin. If he gets going, it's, it's it strikes come quick. So you know, I, I was worried up until then. When I made the spare, I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm all right. I'm yeah. all right. Just get a decent fill. Got a huge tent to make sure it was done. Well, that was uh, the second the second strike you threw in the tent was. Uh, was pretty those, nice. those are the balls you're both those, you think about those you let it go time, right? you let it go and you just there's just no doubt well, Great congratulations feeling. to you and luke and we'll see you guys thank next you. week thank in you the, uh, format next week's going to be a scotch double setup we're going to see all four bowlers next week and we hope you can tune in and uh, make sure you check out duckman tv on facebook and like us thanks for coming